My name is Caroline West and I am a PhD researcher in sexuality studies at Dublin City University. I looked at how Enda Kenny talked about porn when he called for the national conversation on porn to happen. It's always important that we should have a national conversation about what is important for our children, what is and should be a priority for our children, and more and more grow up being online. What used to be termed the, um, the lads' magazines have now um, <coughs> grown to be replaced with a, a pornography that is, that is as ubiquitous as it is damaging. It was interesting that he called for this conversation when he was launching a victim support helpline, so it's already framed as porn as a negative thing. He mentioned things like avalanches of porn are coming, so it's very emotive language that we're using as well. So I examined how that conversation played out, and on the whole it was generally quite a poor conversation, it was very salacious. Um, there's lots of fear-mongering headlines. Even on, when we had the Late Late Show on, they talked about porn, which is great, first of all, but then it turned out to be a really salacious conversation and lots of graphic talk about gagging um, and someone compared the effects of watching porn to um, people watching ISIS beheadings on YouTube and getting PTSD from that. So again, the general reaction on social media to so that was, well, that didn't help us. How do I talk to my kids about porn and sex? And, you know, I feel really worried. What do I do? So the conversation didn't really... Um, move things along in a really kind of holistic way to, to kind of address the issue and, and stop sticking our heads in the sand and how do we actually help parents and teachers and young people address the issue of porn because it's not it's not going away. So the conversations that I would love for the media to engage in is to stay away from really simplistic headlines, have a look at a, a con porn as a wider conversation and part of a wider consumption of media within society as well. We have an ethics of responsibility and that applies to journalism as well so who are you getting in to talk about um, porn? Is it someone who's actually qualified to talk about it? Um, because we've had a history in Ireland of people talking about sex when they weren't qualified and it should be treated as a subject like every other subject. My name is Sarah Sproul. I'm an occupational therapist that works in sexuality education. I support parents who want to talk about sex, relationships and consent with their school age kids. When I was looking for accurate information to guide me in the conversations I needed to have with my kids, it was difficult. It was scary and fearful, and I was trying to find the information that was giving me the support and provide a sense of calmness that I could do this. I would say that it's important to provide context for the news that media outlets are reporting on, that sometimes uh, bad things that are ha happening they're happening not in isolation. It's important, I think, for the media to remember that if they report on one negative thing, that it's easy for the parents who are listening or reading that information to get overwhelmed and to get panicked. And no good parenting has ever come from a sense of panic in a household. So I think the media has a responsibility to look at the kind of language that's been used as well. Instead of looking at, like, all porn is bad, you're looking at, okay, are you lumping in revenge porn into that category? Because that's a very different aspect. Are you lumping in porn and prostitution together? Because they're two very different industries. Um, even the term child porn as well is extremely problematic and I wish we would get away from that and would just refer to it solely as filmed child sexual abuse because child can consent to A, um, sex, or B, being filmed, having sexual activity. So to stop lumping these activities in. We need to have a calm conversation because at the other end of the screen or at the other end of the radio are parents and our young people that are listening and kind of need advice because their sex education at school isn't great. So we are looking at the media to try and help that con conversation along.